are you? I'm no one. Hello, YouTube cadets. In this next segment, you will be briefed on the programming of the AT Tiny chip. Despite having very few inputs and outputs, you will see that it's actually a very powerful little gadget. We will also be turning our Arduino Uno into a special programming device and connecting our AT Tiny up to it. Once this is done, we will burn a bootloader onto the AT Tiny and after that our Starship One sketch. So, without any further ado, let's get cracking. In this segment, we will need the following hardware. As usual, we require a breadboard, Arduino Uno and jumper wires. Additionally, we will need two 3mm LEDs, a white one to test the strobe effect and a red one to test the navigation lights, two resistors with 100 ohm values, an 80 tiny 85 chip and a 10 microfarad capacitor. The capacitor, however, is optional. To start off with, let's examine the AT Tiny 85. There are many microchips which belong to the AT Tiny family, which are referred to as microprocessors, integrated circuits, or AVPs. As an example, the smallest member of the family, the AT Tiny 5, is ridiculously small, but there are many other sizes to choose from. They are convenient for running simple sketches which do not require many inputs and outputs. The most popular of these are the AT Tiny 45 and the AT Tiny 85, which both have eight legs and are almost identical, except that the AT Tiny 85 has eight kilobytes of flash memory compared to the four kilobytes of the AT Tiny 45. This extra memory allows more complex sketches to run and makes the AT Tiny 85 perfect for our purposes. It makes sense to transfer an Arduino sketch to one of these small microprocessors, as an AT Tiny is more cost effective than a big 80 mega chip and has a much smaller footprint on our circuit board. By default, the AT Tiny runs with a 1 MHz clock speed, but we can change this to 8 MHz quite easily. The Arduino's 80 mega chip runs at 16 MHz, which means that we may need to modify our Arduino sketches both for speed as well as pin layout to make them compatible with the AT Tiny. Let's take a closer look at the layout of the AT Tiny 85 microcontroller. To orientate the chip properly, there is either a notch at the top of the chip or a dimple which signifies leg number one of the chip. Then, starting from the top down, the legs are numbered 1, 2, 3 and 4. Continuing in an anti-clockwise fashion, the legs on the other side are numbered 5, 6, 7 and 8. Leg number 8 is the VCC or power input leg of the chip, to which we can connect either 5 volts or 3 volts from the Arduino. Either one will work fine as they are both within the rated voltage limits for the chip. Leg number 4 is the ground leg, which we need to connect to any one of the ground pins on the Arduino. Once our sketch has been uploaded to the AT Tiny, these two legs will need to be connected to our external power source of the final circuit board. Leg number 1 is the reset for the AT Tiny. When activated, it will restart the sketch the same way the reset button on the Arduino board does. Legs 5, 6 and 7 of the AT Tiny can be set up in the sketch as output pins 0, 1 and 2. And similarly, legs 2 and 3 can be set up as output pins 3 and 4 respectively. Pin 0 and 1 are special because they are capable of pulse width modulation which allows us to fade an LED up or down using values from 0 to 255 if needed. If we need inputs, for example from a sensor, legs 7, 3 and 2 can be defined as analog inputs 1, 2 and 3 respectively, or as digital on-off inputs 
if we have a switch connected to one of these legs. In our modified Starship Blink sketch, we will be using pins 2 and 3 on the AT-Tiny as outputs to LEDs. Pin 3 will run the strobe lights of the Starship, while pin 2 will run the navigation lights. Now that we're familiar with the AT-Tiny 85 chip, we need to install the software which will turn our Arduino Uno board into a programming device. First off, we need to install the AT-Tiny support software. We can do this directly by accessing the Arduino GUI program. This process has been simplified greatly in the latest version of the GUI. Simply click on File and navigate to Preferences. In the Preferences window, we will see a dialog box labeled Additional Boards Manager URLs. In the description below, I have included the AT Tiny Boards Manager URL. Simply copy the link and paste it into this dialog box. Click OK to close the Preferences window. Now the Arduino Boards Manager knows where to look for the AT Tiny's data. Next, we navigate to the Tools menu, select the Board entry on the drop down menu, and click on Boards Manager. This will open another window, which includes the most common board supported by the Arduino GUI. Right at the bottom, there will be an entry for the AT Tiny microprocessor. Click on this entry and click again on the install button. The support software will be downloaded and installed from the URL we specified earlier. Once this has been done, we can close this window. This time, when we click on Tools again and select Board, we will see a new entry for the AT Tiny at the bottom of the drop down list. This means that the AT Tiny support is now available whenever we need to access it. In the next step, we're going to change the function of the Arduino Uno board and turn it into a programming device which will allow us to upload code to the AT Tiny microprocessor. Before we do anything else, we need to plug the Arduino board into our consoles. Next, we click on Tools and make sure that the board is set to Arduino Uno and that the correct COM port has been selected. This information is also always visible at the very bottom right hand side of the GUI window. In order to change the Arduino into a programmer, we need to upload a special sketch to the board. Let's click on File and go down to Examples on the drop-down menu. Here we'll see a sub-menu item which is labeled Arduino ISP. ISP merely stands for In-System Programmer. We click on the Arduino ISP sketch inside this folder and the Arduino GUI will call up the programming sketch which was included in the original installation package. We don't need to change anything in the sketch. We simply click the upload arrow to compile the sketch and send it to the Arduino's AT Mega chip. The TX and RX lights blink rapidly, as with any sketch during an upload, after which the LED on pin 13 burns steadily. Once the done uploading message appears on the GUI, we need to close the Arduino ISP sketch and unplug the Arduino board from our consoles. We can then proceed to wire up the AT Tiny to connect it to the Arduino board, ready for programming. We start by adding a 10 microfarad capacitor to the Arduino board. The cathode, or negative leg of the capacitor, the one with the stripe down the side, gets inserted into one of the ground pins of the Arduino, while the positive anode gets inserted into the reset pin of the Arduino. This step is optional, but because we are members of Starfleet, and Starfleet is awesome, we use capacitors. 
give me capacitors for fuck's sakes. Sorry about that. As a side note, it has been speculated that the Klingon language is actually composed of a string of curse words, which does explain quite a few things. Anyway, the function of the capacitor is to prevent the Arduino from resetting accidentally while in the middle of uploading a sketch to the ATtiny. However, this bug has been corrected in the latest versions of the Arduino GUI. But we'll rather err on the side of caution for now and include the capacitor in the circuit. Next, we add the ATtiny chip to the breadboard allowing it to straddle the gutter in the middle of the board. We connect the jumper wire from leg 1, the reset pin of the AT Tiny, to pin 10 of the Arduino. Then we connect leg 5 to the Arduino pin 11, leg 6 to Arduino pin 12, and leg 7 to Arduino pin 13. We connect leg 4 of the AT Tiny, which is the ground pin, to one of the ground pins on the Arduino board. We connect leg 8 of the AT Tiny, which is the VCC or voltage input, to either the 3.3 volt or 5 volt output of the Arduino board. Either one will work fine, and both are within the safe operating parameters of the AT Tiny, but the 5 volt output is usually used by convention. So, for a quick recap, Leg 1 of the AT Tiny gets connected to pin 10 of the Arduino, leg 4 to ground, leg 5 to pin 11, leg 6 to pin 12, leg 7 to pin 13, and leg 8 to 5 volt VCC. That's all there is to it, and now the AT Tiny is ready to receive data from the Arduino ISP. Now we need to instruct the GUI to treat the Arduino as an in-systems programmer, or ISP, which will allow it to burn data onto the AT Tiny chip. To do this, we click on Tools and navigate down to the Board submenu. Then we click on AT Tiny at the bottom of the drop-down list. Now we need to configure the AT Tiny's data. Once again, we click on Tools and just below the board submenu, we select ATtiny85. By default, the ATtiny runs with a 1 MHz internal clock. However, we would prefer it to run with an 8 MHz internal clock to make it more compatible with the Arduino Uno's 16 MHz clock. So, once again, we click on Tools, navigate to just below the ATtiny85 entry, and select an 8 MHz internal clock speed. Finally, we need to select the programmer. We must be very careful in this step, as the entries are a little confusing, and it's a common error to make the wrong selection at this point. Click on Tools, then on Programmer, and then on the entry Arduino as ISP. Do not select one of the other entries as that would prevent the GUI from connecting to the AT Tiny, and we would probably see the following error being reported. Once we've updated our GUI, we can plug in our Arduino board again. You'll notice the LED on pin 13 flashing steadily on and off. This is called the heartbeat, and shows that the pins are connected correctly, and the Arduino ISP is ready for uploads. As we've mentioned, the AT Tiny's internal clock runs at 1 MHz by default, so we need to change it to the 8 MHz which we have currently selected. This is a quick step. We simply click on Tools and then select Burn Bootloader by clicking on it. In a matter of seconds, the new bootloader is burnt to the AT Tiny and it becomes a functioning 8 MHz microprocessor. When done, the LED on Arduino pin 13 burns steadily. Next, we'll upload our Starship 1 sketch to the AT Tiny. We select it by clicking on File and Open or Open Recent to open the sketch in the GUI. An important thing to remember is that the output pins of the AT Tiny are different to those of the Arduino Uno. 
we'll need to modify the sketch and change the output for the strobe lights to pin 3 and the navigation lights to pin 2 on the AT Tiny. If we prefer, we can choose any of the other pin numbers from 0 to 5 for this purpose. We do a quick final check in the lower right hand corner to make sure that we have the AT Tiny 85 selected with an 8 MHz internal clock speed and in the correct COM port and also that the programmer is set as Arduino as ISP. Finally, we can click on the upload arrow which burns the sketch to the AT Tiny. The LED on pin 13 flashes the heartbeat signal again to verify that the sketch upload to the AT Tiny was successful. Older versions of the Arduino GUI interface will report an error after it's done uploading which can be ignored. However, this bug has been fixed since the release of the Arduino 1.6 version and errors do not appear any longer. We need to wire up a quick circuit to check that the sketch is running correctly on the AT Tiny. Once again, we need to unplug the USB cable. We completely remove the four jumper wires connected from pin 10 to pin 13 on the Arduino and the capacitor. Move the ground wire from the ground pin of the AT Tiny to the ground rail of the breadboard and add a jumper from the ground rail to the ground pin of the AT Tiny. In this configuration, the Arduino is nothing more than a power supply for the AT Tiny. We add a 3mm white LED to the breadboard, which will act as a strobe light in our circuit. Add a 100 ohm resistor to the negative leg or cathode of the LED. And a jumper wire from the AT Tiny output pin 3 to the positive leg or anode. We complete this part of the circuit by adding a jumper wire from the resistor to the ground rail of the breadboard. To test the navigation lights, we add a 3mm red LED to the breadboard. Once again, we connect a 100 ohm resistor to the cathode of the LED and a jumper wire from the AT Tiny output pin 2 to its anode. We complete the circuit by adding a jumper from the resistor to the ground rail of the breadboard. Now, just to prove that there's no trickery involved, we'll disconnect the Arduino from the USB cable, remove the positive and negative terminals from the board, and connect the AT Tiny up to a 3 volt battery. As you'll recall, the AT Tiny operates at a rated voltage from 2.7 volts to 5.5 volts, so the 3 volt battery is enough, but barely enough, to power the AT Tiny microcontroller. As you can see, the AT Tiny is now capable of functioning as part of an independent circuit which could easily be included as part of a Starship or any other model for that matter. Now wasn't that something? The AT Tiny is truly a fascinating little chip and we will definitely be revisiting it in the future. As for now, we're laying the groundwork for bigger things to come. So I'll leave you with that and say, say goodbye and thanks for watching.